We're going to scan that car and that seat and do it through. There we go. <laughs> Using a Harbor Freight 3D, Harbor Freight 3D scanner. Does Harbor Freight make 3D scanners now? No, dude, it's real cheap. Here we go, one last time. Today, we're using a Peel 3D scanner to scan this seat, that car, and make some custom mounts for it. My name's Eric, and this is Dirty Elbow's Garage. The entire purpose of today's exercise is to get the geometry of these mounting holes, these cross rails, kind of the contour of the floor, the position of the steering wheel. So I'm getting all of that on there so that on my next version of these things, seat mounts, cleaner all the way around design. This one worked for what it needed to be, but it could be better. And this, that's breakfast. Okay, so I'm not gonna show an unboxing video because it came out of that cardboard box and it was not exciting. Uh, there's two pieces of plastic that surround this case. You have your wire that connects to the camera, power supply. This is all the software, we've already installed it. A wiping cloth for wiping you have your uh, positioning targets. Now, when I first got this, I wasn't sure um, where the calibration paper was, but after reading the manual, this insert comes out and the calibration block is in this guy. So there's actually a lot of warning labels all over it saying, do not mess up this piece of paper. You can see all of them there. We're gonna fire up the tablet and get going from there. So with the 3D scanning, you need positioning targets. 3D scanner comes with several 500 packs of positioning targets, but if you plan on doing a lot of scanning and you want to prolong the life of these as much as possible, you can actually position these targets on poster board or paper, pieces of metal, anything like that, and lay them in whatever geometry you want to capture. I need to be able to bridge this geometry down here straight up into here. Now, 3D scanning, like, like a lot of uh, finite element analysis or anything like that, that's mesh intensive, the idea is to keep your file size as small as possible. It would be great to scan the entire vehicle, have everything modeled, but in real life, that's such a huge file, so much data to process, it's just not worth it in the long run. So the idea is that I wanna be as efficient as possible, hit the points that I need to, transfer my geometry up here to the steering wheel, so that I have all my reference geometry laid out ready to go. The points that are on the cardboard paper are potentially reusable. I'll be able to peel these up, um, not, not, not the individual targets, but the actual entire piece of poster board. 
I can reuse that elsewhere. And let's say scanning another car or another object, I can hang these off of that. Whatever I need to do, I can reuse those. So really the only positioning targets that aren't going to be reused are the 10 that I have on the steering wheel. So now that's in place, uh, let's get the scanner prepped and get going. Any 3D scammer, all 3D scam scammers, all 3D <laughs> scammers. As cool as 3D scanning is, it's definitely got its limits. The Peel 3D is limited by anything with too high reflectivity. Basically, I need to tone this down, otherwise it's just gonna blast the light everywhere. It's gonna be too noisy of an image for the scanner to capture. There's a couple techniques to do that. Uh, the go-to one is people will spray it down with some kind of powder spray to take that off. Uh, to avoid the cleanup mess and, and not have to wipe down your seat, I'll be taking a piece of saran wrap and kind of layering it over this, then spraying that, then scanning the seat, and all that's gonna take place in the next video. Okay, hold on just a sec. I know I just got done talking about how I'm going to de-shine that seat, but after I got done with the scan, I reviewed the file. After you finish the 3D scan, you have to export it or you have to stop the scan. And when you hit stop the scan, it's basically a, a fairly lengthy process. There's a bunch of loading bars. I didn't want to show any of that because I didn't want anybody to sit there staring at loading bars with me. So I finished up the loading bars, shut everything down, went in for the day, fired up the file. And while I was happy with the geometry of the floor, I found all the planes I wanted to. I was happy with the steering wheel placement. All of that worked out great. The whole axis is, or the axis of the hole wasn't exactly where I wanted it to be. It, it's not that it wasn't in the right spot, it just wasn't as defined as it should be. And it kind of makes sense now that I think about it. If, if you shoot light down into a hole, chances are it's not gonna bounce back as easy as if you had something sticking out of the hole. So cut to what you're seeing right now, and what that is is I wrapped the original seat bolts with some masking tape or painter's tape, and what that's allowing me to do is actually capture a better axis off of that feature instead of just an empty hole, where the hole would absorb the light, it wouldn't send it back to the, the scanner as well. The tape around that bolt is going to do a much better job of that. With this new approach, what you're going to see next is actually the CAD information from all of that. Okay, and now that you've seen the final product of what the inside of the car looks like, next time we're gonna be scanning the seat, and then it's combining the two in the video following that. If you like what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. There's definitely gonna be plenty more to come. Thanks for watching. All right, I'm gonna start scanning the car. <laughs> I'm gonna start scanning the car. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start scanning the car. Or do you wanna do that real fast? Do what? The fucking scan on your face. <laughs> Hurry up and get the fucking scan on your face done. I don't Help me. All right, I'll scan your face. <laughs> <laughs>